June is coming to a close and that means I get to play with the spreadsheet again. That's right, it's time for us to set up our July 2022 zero-based budget for our family of three here in the Midwest. So stick around to see what we have planned. Hi friends and welcome to The Budget Bounce. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jen and we talk all about living life on a budget, saving for our future and paying down debt along with all the life that happens along the way. So if those are things that interest you, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell so you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So we need to set up our July 2022 budget and I'm gonna do that in just a minute, but I wanna share before we jump in because I forgot to say until the very end that this budget template is available for sale in my Etsy shop and it is in both Google Sheets format, which is what I use, and also in Excel format. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out. I always leave a link in the description. Also, I have debt and savings trackers over there that you might find helpful. So just take a look anytime. So let's hop on over to the spreadsheet and get going on this budget for July. Now we are looking at our monthly budget template. This is the budget template that I work with every single month, and we have uh, been using this uh, for our family monthly budget for over four years now. It has evolved. It's been in, it was much simpler when we first started, and as things have grown over time, I have found that I need to live in the details, and so I have added more and more to this over the years. So what we're going to focus on today is, of course, we have our income, or excuse me, our budget categories over here in column A, but columns B and C. I know you can't see the column headers, but uh, we are going to focus on the source, which is really the line item description inside of each budget category, and then the budgeted amount. That is what we're doing today to set up July 2022. Now to get started with a zero-based budget, we have to start with our income because we have to know what we're working with. So we do our best guesstimate every month and I always black out our individual salaries, but we have no problem sharing the total. So with our salaries and then rental income of $750, we are expecting 10,945. So now the goal is to spend every dollar before we get it build that roadmap so that we have some direction to go with this because I have mentioned in several videos, we are not good without a roadmap. We struggle with the roadmap. So you can imagine how crazy it was when we didn't have one for, for I think nine years we were together that we didn't have a budget and uh, now we've been doing it for the last four years. So Anyhow, we're gonna start with 10,945 and we're gonna try and spend that all in column C here to give every dollar a purpose. So we don't have any plans for any giving in the month of July, so nothing there. But then with our mortgage, we, we have two mortgages and so we are paying $2,725. That will not change. Our monthly gas and electric has gone up extremely high. Uh, we had two or three $500 bills due to natural gas prices shooting up over the winter. They told us they were coming and um, they were right. Uh, one of them was over 500, I think it was close to 550. It was just crazy. So our monthly, we are on what's called a budget billing cycle and we are in a six month cycle. So that means They'll give us an amount, we'll pay that same amount every month for six months, and then they'll assess and see where we are in our usage versus what we've paid, and then they'll reset it. And because our uh, dollars were so high, our usage really didn't change, but the cost of natural gas changed so much over the winter that we ended up having a huge jump. So this is gonna move into, um, it's gonna be $316 a month for the next six months. So. Before we lived in this house, before we lived in this house, we had never had a $200 a month bill before. And um, this is a much, it's a substantially bigger house. So that definitely played into it. You know, having a bigger house means higher utilities. So 316 is what it's gonna be starting in July through December. And then the December bill, they'll let us know if there's a change. And I really hope that we don't experience next winter, what we did this last winter, because I'd really like this number to go down significantly. 
Water garbage sewer isn't due again until August, so nothing there. Internet has been coming in at $122.99, so I'm going to update that. And then mobile services is $153.75, bringing our total housing to $3,317. Next up is transportation, and I have gas at $250, but I'm going to change this to $300. I have to go into the office more often and um, we may be making a couple of substantial trips. Uh, we have a family member who's gravely ill and she's not expected to make it. And so we may have to make what well, we know for sure. One trip is happening in July to go see her and we may have to make a second trip to say goodbye. So um, our transportation, then we also have OnStar for 24 and there may be some repairs to the Lucerne, but I am not going to put anything here because it's still up in the air. We do have a sinking fund for vehicles. So if I have to pull out for, um, if we have to pay for anything for the Lucerne, then uh, we'll pull out of the sinking fund for that. But because I don't know, I'm not going to put anything in here. So that brings our total transportation to $324 for the month. For food, we're going to do $725 for groceries and $175 for dining, bringing the total to $900. We don't have any specific expenses expected for the kids or our granddaughter, so nothing there. Next up is pets. So you can see here we have $75 for food, but I'm actually I'm trying to think. I am going to leave it at $75. I, I do think that's about what our average is right now, as long as Lucy is on the special diet. She's our 14 year old cat and has a pretty big mass in her tummy. And so she has to have um, prescription food and it's pretty expensive. So um, that's why that needs to stay. We don't have to get anything for Uther and those usually cost about $45 for a bag, but um, hers is more expensive. For grooming, uh, $25. And so that includes the Petco Vital Care that we have so that uh, Uther can get his nails trimmed and his teeth brushed or cleaned. I should say his, it's just a basic brushing, but we can take him up to uh, once a week for $19 for the whole month. So uh, we usually take him twice and do a $3 tip while we're there. So that's where the $25 comes from. No plans on meds. Uh, other supplies are just treats and things that we do for training and that kind of thing with Uther and then no plans for training expenses or the vet bringing the total to $145. Insurance is pretty boring this month, but it will be changing in August because uh, my husband has most of our family benefits. He carries them and their plan year restarts on July 1st. So we will have um, the July payments that he will get will have the old rates on them. But like, I know that medical is going to go to $500 a month. That is what we're going to have to pay for that. And I know that dental is also going up, but I can't remember how much it is. So anyhow, this month it's not changing. Um, this is pretty standard what it has been uh, all year. So 939 is what our total for insurance will be. All right. In entertainment, we're going to do 35 for streaming and $4 for HP Inc. And then $10 for Cinemark. And then I am going to put $30 in here because we do plan to go to a couple of movies during the month of July. And so that'll bring our total entertainment to $79. For health insurance, we have 500, not insurance, excuse me, for health in general, 514 to our flexible spending accounts. And then that's a benefit through our, our uh, employers. Both Matt and I have it. It's not insurance. It is a way to pay for our healthcare expenses with pre-tax dollars. And so I don't, I used to have it in the insurance section and I pulled it out because it's not truly insurance. So uh, this just helps. We just pay our bills just like we normally would, but it comes out of this account with pre-tax dollars instead of after-tax dollars. And it ends up saving us about 20 to 25% on our tax bill every year for those dollars. Jim is 33 and healthcare, we don't have any plans for anything. That brings the total to $547. Right now, I don't have anything slated for extras. If something comes up, lots every month something comes up. But one thing that I know that might come up will be yard and garden things because we will start to harvest the uh, garden. It usually in late July is when that first gets going. 
more of that will happen in August and September, but that might be a place where we'll have some extras for sure. In miscellaneous, we have $60 for personal spending, $100 for household, and $100 for all other miscellaneous, bringing the total to $260. Moving on to savings, we are going to put $100 into our emergency fund, and I am going to stop the investments that I have been doing into, there's some individual investment accounts that I have, and I'm going to put this to zero. I'm going to stop them so that we have more to put towards debt for a while. Um, now that we've got some high interest debt again, we just need to be putting everything we can towards debt to try to get all of that knocked out. So we're going to keep the college savings at 100 and then our retirement will stay at $611, bringing our total savings to $811. Next up is sinking funds. So let's have a look at those. $170 to auto insurance, 20 to auto registrations. I'm going to make this 26 to bugs account and then uh, 15 to business travel for Matt. So this is, a, so bug by the way is our granddaughter. I apologize. Um, she's our granddaughter and we like to keep a little bit um, stashed away for her uh, for various things that we pick up to help out. Uh, business travel, $15. This is because Matt may have to travel for business. And the unlike my business where I have a corporate credit card and I just put everything on the credit card, he works for the state. And so he has to pay for any travel expenses out of pocket and then submit for a reimbursement, which comes back later. We just want to have it here available to us so that it doesn't impact our budget. If something comes up at the last minute and he has to go, uh, he has to go on a trip. City utilities, we're going to do 100, clothing 35, entertainment 15, estate planning 20, gifts will be 40, healthcare is 40. Uh, we're not going to put anything into Henry's account. He is sitting at 450, and so I'm going to leave it at that and cap it out there. Holidays 100, home maintenance 150, image is 40, life insurance is going to be 81. Nothing for debt payoff. Online subscriptions, I'm gonna leave at 50. Pet expense is 100. And this really, so I have the pet expense category up at the top because we have expenses every single month for them. But this one is really for the unexpected things like we put him in, um, not even, it's not unexpected, I shouldn't say that. This is really for the bigger things. So going to the vet and getting meds like flea meds and things like that right so those are the bigger expenses that don't have an, happen every month we just boarded uther last month it cost 150 dollars to board him that's the kind of thing that is coming out of our pet expense fund technology is 50 and i'd really like to put more into this i'm not going to change it for now uh, we have we both have very old computers and our, my phone is four years old and Matt's is only a couple of years old, but, um, the fear Matt is hard on his phones. They just don't last as long for him. And my fear is that my phone's going to die. And so anyway, we're just trying to build up a little something here to help with that. And, um, in fact, we just had to spend, uh, I think it was late last year. We spent $300 fixing Matt's phone because there was a problem with it. And we used the technology fund to help pay for that. So vacation, we're going to put in 200 vehicles. We're going to put in 100 wedding anniversary. We're going to put in 20 and then I am um, not putting anything into Xanthi. We're going to cap it out at 700. So that brings our total sinking funds to $1,372 as the plan for July. All right, and moving on to our debt section. This is so big. We have it broken down into three subsections. So we have a subsection for all the things that we have paid off in full. They're in the rear view mirror. We don't have to deal with them anymore. And that's the total on those is $56,854. And you can see we've got some pink and black font here. Pink is anything that has my name on it. And black is are the things that only have Matt's name on them. So these have all been paid in full. Then we have this charged off section, and these are some really old credit cards of Matt's. When we started everything in 2018, living life on a budget and trying to tackle our debt, 
Matt wanted the strategy to be that we focus on the things that were in my name and take care of those and worry about his later. And so that's where the pink and the black came from. And this is an example of things that he just didn't want us to be thinking about at all. He just wanted us to focus on other things where we could. So these are all, are all old credit cards that are no longer with the original creditor. As far as we know, they total $5,476. We will deal with them later. But more interesting is the actively paying section where we have $153,620 remaining to pay. So let's just take a look at those. We've got child support for $456. We've got this card. Uh, this, these two right here used to be up here, but they both had lawsuits uh, that they filed against Matt. And so he set up payments because at the time that these came through, we didn't have enough um, without pulling out of our emergency fund, which we didn't want to do. Uh, we didn't have enough to settle these at the time. So he's making monthly payments on those. Then there's another child support for $91. And then we have um, another credit card that this is mine. The one item that I have in collections, and that is $50 per month. And that used to be 25, but um, the old company, I don't know if they sold or what happened, but now it's under a new company. And so I decided when I set up the new the the new withdrawal that I would make it $50 instead of 25 to try to get a little more traction here. UIS student loan, that's a private student loan, that's $50. Car payment is $550. The HELOC is $205. Uh, the other Visa card that we have is $300. Nothing to graduate student loans, $300 to the family loan, and nothing to the student, the undergrad student loans. That brings our total to $2,174. Now you'll take a look over here and you can see these are in the order of, I think, I think they stayed in the order of um, smallest to largest balance so that we can see that. You can see we have a negative at the end of July for the child support. Um, and that's because he's going to be done, but it'll take them two or three pay cycles to actually catch up with that. And uh, before they stop the deduction coming out of his check. So we have to plan for the fact that they're going to take all of it. So he'll be in a negative and then they'll reimburse him once they figure everything out. So that's going to be a big one and we're glad to have that one behind us. So let's take a look and see where we are with total expenses here versus total income. So we have 10,871 in expenses that we've planned here and 10,945 in total income, which means we have $73 left over. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that 373 to the MRV card because as you can see here, these are the, the ones that we're paying interest on right now. And I make those yellow because as the month goes on and I get, I, and I know for sure what that is, I take the yellow off. It just makes it, um, that's just a mechanism for me to remember to make sure to check it. So anyhow, we want to get this number down. And so um, I realized that putting $73 to this isn't getting me any closer to getting rid of a payment, but we are about re to, ready to get rid of a $456 payment that we will determine where that's going to go. So $73 on here is what we're going to do this month. And then that basically takes us to zero. So that is what our July is looking like. There will be changes uh, when we go into August, like this is the time of year when we start having some changes because of insurance uh, costs and things like that changing. And of course, the fact that this child support is going to be going away. Um, and uh, if there was an easy way to just pay the child support and just keep paying the total of these two, which is $548 a month, we would do it. But um, our state does not, they have really archaic systems and they make it really difficult and expensive to make extra payments. So we're not going to make extra payments for now, not on those, not on the child support. And by the way, uh, for those of you who, who don't know, our, the support is all paid for. This is actually interest on the arrearage or the back child support that he had over the years that is being paid down. So let me move this so you can see. So the interest will be done here and he's uh, at 2,370 at the end of July on, that's the wrong one, 2,095 at the end of July on this one. <clears throat> so I hope that things are shaping up for you for July 
And um, if you like this budget template, feel free to check it out in my Etsy store. I make it available in Excel format and in Google Sheets. I also have debt and savings trackers out there. So you should check them out and see if there's anything out there that you think that might be helpful. I always include the link to my store in the description of every video. So let us know how things are going and what your outlook is for July. Do you have your budget done? Are you working on it? Is there anything big or exciting in your budget that you wanna share? So just leave it down in the comments and that is all I have for you guys today. I will see you next time.